Joining me now, Dr. Charles Krauthammer, a syndicated columnist, of course, and Fox News contributor. So, Charles, if I look at this and I have this right, Chelsea Manning revealed classified government documents that many say put people's lives in danger, and she will serve a fraction of her sentence. But the leaking of John Podesta's emails is an absolutely unpardonable offense, according to many. Your thoughts? No, I think you're pointing to the unbelievable hypocrisy. Uh, the administration, the president, gets all exercised over the WikiLeaks and the campaign, which essentially amounted to the private emails of John Podesta with gossip, backbiting, and kind of embarrassing private intra-party revelations. That's about it. Nobody died. These were not national security secrets. Uh, and yet Obama orders a report, has to be on his desk before he leaves office, gets very exercised, imposes sanctions on the Russians. Here we have a guy, Manning, a woman now, who released information that had to do with our actions in ongoing wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, including the identification of people who were working for us, many of whom we can presume were hunted down and killed as a result. I think it is simply astonishing that the president at the same time would be so exercised over the Podesta releases through WikiLeaks uh, and then be extending, commuting the sentence of Chelsea Manning. You know, there, there's a couple of things that are at work here. One is that many people believe that the sentence was too long for what it was and all of the arguments to, that uh, Catherine just pointed out in her reporting and what you have made um, point to the fact that people's lives were put at risk so but some people still say they believe it was too long the sentence the other issue is that this is a was a troubled young man now a woman as you point out and that there's a sensitivity to the transgender issue that may have swayed this decision in the White House in terms of how this prisoner was treated living in an all-male facility is any of that relevant, as sensitive as everyone may be to those issues and, and the personal strife, is it relevant in, in the decision to commute? But think about what that means. This is bizarre. In other words, you can betray your country, publish secrets that endanger our soldiers, our allies, our interests, and then when you present with a gender problem, that gets you sprung out of a sense of uh, sorrow or pity on the part of the officials. If you want to make a full-blown argument for mental illness, that perhaps this person's incompetent, something like that, have him end up in a psychiatric facility, sort of a John Hinckley post facto, I can understand that, although I doubt that's going to be the rationale we hear from the administration tomorrow. I want to talk about this Oscar Lopez case as well. Um, his sentence is also likely to be commuted. He's 74 years old. He served 35 years of a 55-year sentence. And let me just remind everybody what he did. He was part of the FALN back in the 1970s and 80s. Uh, he proclaimed in front of a judge, I am an enemy of the U.S. government. This was a radical group that was fighting for freedom for, for Puerto Rico. Um, one of the many things they did was the bombing of France's tavern down in the Wall Street area where four Four people lost their lives. They were killed in a, in a scene that was echoed years later uh, on 9-11 in, in many ways. It was considered the first terrorist attack on Wall Street. Why would this person's sentence be, be up for, commu for commutation? Well, I'm not sure I know the answer, and I will speculate. Um, look, this was a very bad guy. More than 200 attacks in the 70s and the 80s. The Clintons tried to spring him late in the Bill Clinton administration, but he refused to sign a document that would have expressed remorse. So this is a very hardcore terrorist. Now, why was he released? I would speculate that this might be the last shoe to drop in the normalization sellout to Castro, because the FALN was not just a sort of a Puerto Rican independence terror group. And after all, Puerto Rico's had referenda on the issue. But he was also, the group was also, like just about all the other bad guys in the Western Hemisphere, supported by and close to the Castro regime. So this could be, who knows, we That's saw just a few days ago a, cha a change in, in policy, Cuban immigration. This could have been the last payback. 
What did we get in return? Zero. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of people who'd like Joanne Chesimar uh, back from Cuba, if that's the case, and they would want that to be part of any such deal. Really interesting angle on that, Charles. Thank you very much. Great to see you tonight. My pleasure.